Hello everyone. We're here today in Pontiac, Michigan at the Perry Mount Park Cemetery. I have a lot of family and friends laid to rest here in this cemetery. And in particular today though, we're coming to visit the grave site of a soldier, a veteran, who was treated very poorly due to racism. And he's buried right here, near my uncle, and near a, uh, another soldier who was a Medal of Honor winner. And this is the what they used to call the VFW section of the cemetery. Now it's like the old veteran section. And the new veteran section is way in the back in the southwest corner of the property. Let's go find Mr. Nash. Well, that didn't take too long to find. Let's see. We'll show you how to find it if you want to come here and visit. Private First Class George Nash, victim of anti-Native American racism in 1960. And here we go. Mr. Nash, sorry for what you had to bear. From Michigan, Private First Class, 8th Ammunition Train, World War I, born in 1894, died in 1960. Mr. Nash was born in Nebraska, part of the Winnebago tribe, and him and his wife and family settled in Michigan. His wife, Cassie Marie Delara Nash, has another story. His wife passed away. He purchased two cemetery plots in the brand new White Chapel Cemetery in Troy, Michigan. And his wife was buried there when she passed in 1949. And there wasn't any problem. In 1960, Mr. Nash passed away. And they were taking him to his burial site, actually getting ready to lower his casket down into the grave when the director of the cemetery came up and physically stopped them, interceded to keep them from burying him in the cemetery because his death certificate listed him as Native American. And only Caucasians were allowed at White Chapel Cemetery back then, which was very sad. And they said, well, his wife's already buried here. And they were willing to let that go because I guess it didn't mention that on any of her death certificate paperwork or anything. So they were willing to let her stay there, but they said he couldn't be buried. And the funeral director is like, I guess, highly agitated, and they almost came to blows over the situation. And they actually literally had the White Chapel workers remove the casket and put it back in the hearse against the wishes of the funeral director. <sighs> Some publicity resulted, bad publicity. And the cemetery here in Pontiac, the VFW, part of the cemetery said we would be honored to have veteran Nash buried here and we will also plan on having his wife moved here at a later date. Here's a newspaper photo from the funeral for Mr. Nash attended by Native Americans from many different tribes who came to the area to pay their respects and this is a little clip from the newspaper from that time. And also a more detailed story about Mr. Nash and the whole burial controversy. Although, from what i found out so far, it doesn't look like that's ever happened. I believe she's still interred over at Whitechapel. But I'm going to look into that further and we'll find out. But if you want to come here, pay your respects to Mr. Nash, all the other veterans buried here in this section, or in the back section, and you want to find Mr. Nash's grave, come to the back, toward the back middle of the cemetery, you'll see these little buildings here. Then, of course, you'll see the artillery pieces and the flagpole. And it's, I'd say, just a little over halfway from the road to the flagpole and the second big row over. You couldn't, you can't miss it. You can't miss. It. Now let's find out what happened to Mr. Nash's widow and see if she's still in Whitechapel. The staff at Perrymount Park Cemetery had no record of her being transferred to that facility, and White Chapel still shows her as being a resident burial here. So, 
to come in the main entrance till you get to the statue in the roundabout, turn left, come down past the first street until you get to the flagpole. And then just kind of line up with the flagpole and that there's the flagpole. Turn and look north to that big pine tree. And it's about two thirds of the way between the road and the pine tree. And the whole iron mark section right here would be where Mr. and Mrs. Nash have purchased their final resting place. There you go. A very sad story and not a pleasant part of Michigan history for sure. It appears, I looked and looked, I can't find a marker from Mrs. Nash. I'm guessing there probably wasn't ever one put in place. Um, I will go back and check next time I'm at the cemetery and spend some more time looking around the area, but I really don't think there's a marker there. The state legislature passed a law in 1961 prohibiting discrimination in burials in Michigan, but the implementation of the law was held up until a Supreme Court ruling in 1966 in the state. We can remember them and honor them and be thankful for the changes that have happened in the meantime. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll check out my video on the Michigan Heroes Museum that features a Medal of Honor recipient from the Korean War that's buried just a few stones away from Private Nash. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.